want some cream cheese? Do you want some cream cheese? You too. Me too. <laughs> Hello, vintage neighbors. Welcome to the Vintage Girl Next Door. My name is Lacey, and today we're in the kitchen because Thanksgiving is coming up, and I thought that it would be a lot of fun to share a recipe with you. And this is not just any recipe, this is a family recipe. So I am making a jello mold for you, and it's one that my mom's been making for years, and I believe that she got the recipe from my dad's sister. And while I am not positive that it originates in the 50s, it definitely fits right in. So we're doing a holiday jello mold using cranberry. It's going to be a lot of fun. If you like a vintage recipe and cooking videos, make sure you hit the thumbs up. That helps me to know that you like it and want more of this kind of content. And it also helps to tell YouTube to show my videos to more people. And that really helps me out. I did find a very similar recipe to this in my Better Homes and Garden holiday cookbook. And in that cookbook, it's called a cranberry ring. And very similar to this recipe. It's a very simple recipe, just three ingredients for the jello and then two ingredients for the topping. So let's get started and let's cook a cranberry jello ring. All right, here are our ingredients. We have whole berry cranberry sauce, some crushed pineapple, raspberry jello mix, cream cheese, sour cream, and our jello mold. First of all, we're gonna make the jello, but you don't make it according to the package. Uh, we're cutting down the water a little bit because we have a certain capacity in our jello mold. So first of all, boil one cup of water and then mix it in with the jello, dissolve the jello into the boiling water. And once that is dissolved, then you add one cup of cold water and the colder the better i put this cup of water into the fridge for a while before i started making it as the colder it is then the faster the jello is going to set up which is always a good thing and then we are going to add in our fruit so just opening this can of cranberry Kind of breaking it up as I put it in and then like mix it around so that there's not huge chunks of gelatin in there. It's just nice and broken up. Then I'm going to add in about half of this can of pineapple. If you have a bigger jello mold, you can add all of it if you want, but I was running out of space, so I didn't do the whole can of pineapple. Now I am going to put it into the mold and make a little bit of a mess in the process. It is fine. We can wipe it up, right? And then I started like spooning the bigger pieces of fruit in so that it wouldn't splash as much, hopefully. And I ended up with a little bit extra, but not too bad. So now we're gonna put that in the fridge for a few hours to set up and let it chill. I filled my mold a little too full and I was spilling. <laughs> so while our jello sets up, we are gonna make the topping. So I'm just taking a carton of sour cream and a package of cream cheese that's kind of softened. I just let it sit out. There's a slight cameo from Mr. Cash in the corner. <laughs> And then I'm going to mix those two together, just using my handheld mixer. Try to get it as smooth as I can and not chunks of cream cheese setting in the sour cream if possible. 
And I said this was only two ingredients and you can leave it just with this as is, but I do like to add a little bit of vanilla. So I added a teaspoon of vanilla and a tablespoon of sugar just to sweeten it up just a little bit. And then give it another good mix. And now I'm just going to put that in the fridge and let it chill as well. And now some time has passed. It's just been a few hours and I checked our jello and it is solid. We are ready. So to get this jello out of the mold, I ran the bottom of the mold under some hot water to loosen it up a little bit. Not, it doesn't take much. And just run it under the hot water and it came right out. Yay. And now I'm just gonna spoon some of the topping into that middle ring. I ended up with a lot of extra topping. I may end up making one more jello ring. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. And then just fill the center. Got some nice jiggly action going on there. <laughs> fill the center with the topping. And here it is, folks. It looks wonderful. It is chunky jello with the fruit in it, so the pattern of the mold doesn't come through as well, but you can still kind of see it on there. Looks cool. Looks 50s. Love it. Our cranberry jello ring is done. It looks great. The only thing I would add to make it look even more 1950s is if I put maybe a little bit of like lettuce leaf around the plate just for plating purposes, but I didn't have any. So here we have it, folks. Cranberry jello ring. We've been making it for years between my mom and I for Thanksgiving. We always have the cranberry jello. You can also add some chopped walnuts to the jello if you like them. I don't like it with the nuts. I like it best just with the fruit and the jello, but it is an option. So let's cut a piece. Let's taste it. Like I said, I have it every year for Thanksgiving. I know I like it, but I think I'm ready to try a piece now. Let's see if I can cut this without making a huge mess. We'll see. Not too bad. I'm gonna get a little bit more of the topping. Yum. Like I said, we've been making this for Thanksgiving for years. I do know that I like it and it does remind me of Thanksgiving every time. So yum. The raspberry jello and the cranberries are kind of nice and like tart a little bit. It's not too sweet, which is great. And then the cream cheese and sour cream topping. It just goes together so well. I know it sounds weird, like sour cream and cream cheese blended and put on top of Jello, but trust me, it's good. <laughs> also, I'm not a big fan of Jello just plain. I'm really not, but Jello with lots of fruit and things in it, good. So I love the whole cranberries in there. The pineapple adds some a little bit of sweetness Overall, I'm giving this one like a 10 out of 10, you guys. I really enjoy this this little jello dessert thing. And it's just a bonus that it ends up looking so cute and so 50s, but it's actually yummy. Hmm? Well, I ate the whole thing. <laughs> it's so yummy. 
please let me know in the comments if you decide to try this one, especially if you try it for Thanksgiving. Let me know what you think. Let me know what your family thinks. I would love to hear from my vintage neighbors. Also, do you have a go-to Thanksgiving dish that you serve every year? I would love to hear about that too. Do you have any family recipes that you make every year for Thanksgiving? Leave them in the comments. Let's share those with the Vintage Neighborhood. I will type the recipe in the description below just in case you want to test it out for yourself. It is a good one. I just wanted to take a second and tell you how grateful I am for each and every one of you, for my Vintage Neighbors. The Vintage Neighborhood, it means the world to me. Your comments, your friendship and your love means so much to me and I'm so grateful for each of you for being here. If you are new to the Vintage Neighborhood and you want to stick around, feel free to subscribe. We would love to have you join in the Vintage Neighborhood for more of our vintage fun. I upload almost every Monday, trying to get back on track with that. I hope that wherever you are in the world that you are feeling safe and feeling loved and know that I love you and I'm grateful for you and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye! Thank you.